Good evening, ladies and gentlemen of City Council. Um, appreciate you coming here tonight. I'll try to be brief but informative. Um, tonight we're going to talk about the structure of the library, a little bit of the history, some statistics, what you pay, and then kind of what you get and what you will get. With no further ado, let's dig in. Who do you have with you, Mr. O'Hara? Huh? Who do you have with you, sir? I have what? Who do, you, who do you have with you? Oh, and I have Jeff Blazes right here. He's my fiscal officer. Thank you. Great guy. Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> Okay, so I just wanted to give you um, a brief overview of what the department structure of the Lincoln Library looks like currently right now. Um, I just wanted to point out that I think Alderman uh, Redpath was speaking earlier about not having, having a lot of folks um, kind of on beat for the police. For us, we don't have a lot of folks in our administrative area. That's that top right-hand corner. All the folks below that line in the middle of the chart are actually um, helping the public as well. The only one exception to that is the technical services right there. Those are the folks behind the scenes receiving the books, um, making sure they're in the right places in terms of cataloging them so they're accessible later on. So everyone else, um, all our managers are working managers, meaning that they're actually working on the desk um, and helping patrons out as well. We'll go to the next slide. Um, so right now our workforce has held pretty consistent since financial year 12 at 41. We've held pretty solid with that. Um, the only change for this year, we've gone down to 40 because um, Jeff has been changed over to OBM reporting there. So that's the difference in change for there. Um, so it's went from 40 to 41 with Jeff reporting to OBM rather than the library. Thank you. Um, this is the, the history of the library. I won't belabor the point and go through here point by point, but I just think it's important to understand where we are um, and, and where we, we've been to understand where we are and where we want to go with the library. And I know not all of you have seen this, but so I wanted to share this with everyone. But there are two points I really wanted to make on here, point out. Um, in 2009, the, main, the library's main hours were reduced from 70 to 57 hours. 70 is kind of the um, recommended number of hours that a library of our community should be open. Um, that also includes the Sunday hours that we have that are only available October through April as well. So that's something to consider. We might be able to eke out a few more hours somewhere else, but we wouldn't be able to make a substantial difference um, currently with the staffing levels. And then at the bottom right there, financial year 2009, just looking 10 years ago, the budget request was about 5.3. Um, we've had 11% budget decrease compared to what uh, next year's financial request is. Adjusted for inflation, this is actually about a quarter of our buying power decrease, 22.5% budget decrease. So that's something to be in mind that we've been pretty fiscally responsible with the library. Thank you, Jeff. Um, and this is kind of a good representation of kind of where we stack up to communities that we compare ourselves. You saw earlier, um, we were, Bill was showing you all the, all the communities we uh, compare ourselves to. These are all the libraries we kind of stack up to. It's from the IPLAR, which is basically kind of the, to put it in basketball terms, I'm a big fan of basketball. This is the box score of the library here, so to speak. Um, and then there's also the one with asterisks next to them, have multiple branches, and all of them but Lincoln Library are supported by property tax revenue. <coughs> Um, I'm sure you might have some questions on this so we can get into that afterwards as well. Um, so as someone who is new to the community and new to the library here, something that really popped out to me, um, a couple different figures, this is one of them right here, this is per capita dollar spent, which is meaning what every individual from the community pays to keep the library open, funded, and going. As you'll take a look right here, we're at 3802 um, per person in our community. We're the lowest by quite a bit. Um, the next closest individual that's comparable to us is Decatur. They're about 18% more at 45.86. And as a whole, we're about 45% less funding than a traditional community pays for their library. Um, that's just to show how very efficient and really um, good stewards of the community money we are. So we're about 45% less funding than a, any comparable library in our area. We also have this one. Uh, it's capita per FTE. A um, little confusing. I like to call that class size, if that makes sense to you. That's how I think of it. That's the number of individuals for every one employee we have, full-time employee equivalent we have, um, how many folks that they serve. So this is basically kind of the labor that goes in the library. Ours, for every one person we have, we serve about 3,150 individuals. It's 3,141. The next closest library is Decatur with 2,535. And as a whole, if you average all those out, we're about 55% less staff than traditional libraries we kind of compare ourselves to. So again, this is a real testament to our staff. 
constantly willing to pitch in, make ends meet wherever we can, do anything they can to kind of keep the library going. And um, the two words I, I would think of when I come to this library as an outside individual, um, new to the community, very scrappy and very efficient. We get a lot, we squeeze, squeeze all the toothpaste out of that tube for you guys. And so we're gonna kind of look at what, uh, right now, what we put in and where it's kind of been allocated and then we'll talk a little bit about what you get for that. Um, some of the changes, the variance here, um, for personnel services and contractual services, that actually represents the change with Jeff here because it's now a contractual service. We're paying that to OBM rather than personnel services. So that's why that's been a kind of a flip-flop on that one, so to speak. Uh, so that accounts for the large change between that. In addition, you've had your, um, the director has been changed and you saved about $20,000 on that. So that's very good for the library. Um, and for commodities, the large increase for that, or not substantially large, 13.52, about $5,500. Um, that's been increased because we have great programming numbers, and it's amazing what we can do with paper clips, rubber bands, and construction paper. But we think that if we had a little bit more money, we could really stretch that a little bit farther, um, do some more technology, um, innovative things, uh, technology-related things. And so if we had a little bit more, we think we could have more robust programming. We could attract a larger audience and have better programming as a whole. For electronic data processing, that's going to be a $5,000 increase because we had recommended from ISD that we replace 28 of our computers. We have kind of an aging, <coughs> aging computers at the library. Um, we were able to accomplish only 12 of that with our current budget, and to be able to bridge that divide a little bit, that gap, we decided an increase of $5,000 was prudent. The operation of auto equipment, um, this is kind of paid in arrears. It's based off what we've um, experienced in the past. Um, we didn't have very many trouble with our, uh, we didn't have that much trouble with our vans this year. As a result, we haven't had to budget that much money, just some oil changes, very light stuff like that. So that's the significant reduction. All in all said, we're about 0.2% down. Um, I did want to point out as well that the library um, is probably is outlined in the mayor's um, letter as well, um, introductory letter to the budget. We're also do reducing our transfer in by a quarter of a million dollars. Um, that's a 5.4% decrease as well. So that's something to consider when you're looking at that bottom line number as well. And just kind of referencing what Alderman Hanauer mentioned, we're not the types just to spend the money just to spend it. We only will purchase what we need. We've been very good stewards of the community's money. We're going to get everything out of it, and we won't spend more than we need. Um, and that's just a testament to the fiscal responsibility of, of the library, and particularly Jeff over here. Uh, back one. Uh, so this is basically a breakdown of what we kind of pay where the money goes. Operations keeps the library open, heat on, the books on the shelf, and our electronic resources, things like that. Our personal services over there are our people. And people is really what makes the library a library. It would just be a building with books and computers in it without the services of the fine people at the Lincoln Library. Um, I think Bill said he could talk an hour about the slide earlier. I could talk about an hour on this slide. I will not do that to you, I promise. Um, but just really all the different accomplishments that we've been doing. Um, our, our biggest accomplishment is just being there for the community every single day, really being the people's university. Um, there's no other place in the community that supports education for every single person in our, in our community. Um, supports education and human capital, which I think is our most important asset as a, a community, is our human capital. Um, so I'll highlight just a couple of these in the interest of time. I'll try not to cover all of them, even though I desperately would like to. Um, we've also, we've added the electronic resource lynda.com. If you haven't seen it, I would definitely implore you to take a look at it. It's a robust, um, self-directed uh, suite of videos. It focuses primarily on business, um, technology, and some artistic endeavors as well. So we think this will really help out individuals, but also businesses in the community, because um, if they have a workforce, then maybe they can't um, have a funding for training, they can actually use this to brush up their Microsoft Excel, all those different things. Um, it's, it's wonderful. It goes from anywhere from intermediate to advanced, and then it also... Um, it also is great for small business because they're, if they're interested in building a website, this will walk them step by step on how to build a website, thinking about the website, um, and then what software they can use. I could go on and on. Really good numbers for it so far. We've also had the successful launch of eCards for the 186 district students. Um, so basically all 186 uh, students who go to 186 have an e-card, regardless of where they live. If they're in the 186 district, they have one. It's just their student number, able to use that. Uh, get in there and 
take advantage of all our electronic resources. We're really supporting education. We've had some really, really good numbers for our electronic resources this year. We think we're going to see a substantial increase. Um, some of them, like our um, Britannica, have doubled, essentially, in usage. So we're very happy about that. We'll skip over that next one there in the um, interest of time. We've also focused on adult education for the GED high school equivalency and ESL, which is English as a second language. Uh, we've had over 210 participants in this. Um, and really, it's a little misleading because it says GED. Really, we're trying to get those folks who are at a first grade literacy level to a fifth grade literacy level so they can go to Lawrence, get into there. They can't get in there without that. Or from a first grade level or starting from zero up to an eighth grade level so they can take the RN do better for themselves and their community. So that's kind of what our focus is on that, kind of getting those folks up to that level where they can take the next step. Um, we're really part of a partnership we've had with 186. We're having individuals with disabilities to come in. Um, it's a win-win for both of us. They're able to develop work skills, and we actually get some of uh, much-needed help at the library as well. So it's a win-win. They're excited to be there, and we're happy to have them as well. Um, we'll skip the next couple ones here. I also wanted to uh, mention the addition of hotspots to the library collection. Um, we recently added those. Um, we can't keep them on the shelves. It's basically checking out the internet to our community. Um, it's three out of 10 Americans, according to the Pew study, do not have the internet at their house. They don't have that access. I think a lot of people think everyone has the internet at their house. That is just not the case. So whether they're a late adopter or someone who can't afford to have the internet, we really want to kind of bridge that gap a little bit, and this is a way we can do that. What was we, that stat again? Um, th that 30, three out of 10 Americans across the nation do not have internet access at their house. Um, it's from Pew. So um, we're trying to kind of bridge that gap. I think a lot of people, there's a misconception that most people think everyone has the internet at their house. That's just not the case. We've also had the successful implementation of going fine free for juvenile materials. We're trying to eliminate as many um, obstacles to be able to get file literate and being able to take advantage of the library's resources. Um, it may not seem much to you or to, to us, but $20 can really wreck someone's budget. So if they take out 20, 30 bucks, books like myself, I do that habitually. If they can't get to the library for whatever reason, your car breaks down, you're not really thinking about that. That could be a $20, $30 fine and it might stop you from ever using the library again. We want to remove those obstacles so people are able to use our resources. Um, so we're very proud of that. Um, do our best to kind of keep people using the library. And uh, we think that the amount, the skills, the increase in literacy will far outweigh the small amount of fines we'll, we'll have. So we really think that's a great investment in our community and our people. Um, in addition to that, we think uh, library access for youth is very important and our community supports that as well. We recently had a fine forgiveness display, which the community gave the gift of library access to 169 children. Um, we're over the moon about this. Um, th this. While this isn't a library accomplishment, I think this is more of a city of Springfield as, as a whole, the whole community accomplishment, that they really value that and they value the library and especially access for youth. So um, kudos, kudos to the city on that one. Thank you for coming out. Um, we're overwhelmed. We actually got picked up on some national attention from that. We were in US News and World Report uh, for doing this and we got picked up on the AP wire. So we've been actually getting some, some calls from other libraries wondering kind of what we're doing, so we're very proud. But the biggest thing is that we were able to get 169 youth back in our library using its services. Um, last but not least, um, 429 programs with uh, 7,234 attendees. Those are pretty good numbers, and that ranges from anything to painting rocks, to classes on how to set up your email, Excel, um, classes on you name it, we have it at our library. So it, it's really, we do a plethora of different things, and I, as you can tell, I continue to talk about this. I just wanted to be mindful of your time. So I believe the mayor mentioned a couple weeks ago that uh, 2018 is the year of optimism. So even in the current situation, we're very optimistic about um, what we can kind of do in financial year 2019. Um, so we want to continue to find and develop collaborations for maximum community impact. We think Springfield works better when we all work better together. So we want to take those, I remember reading in the, um, the 20-year plan that some of Springfield feels a little disjointed. We really view ourselves as the glue of the community, the missing puzzle piece, kind of fill in those gaps, get people not only together, but organizations, so we reduce those redundancies, and we think working better together is gonna to help out the whole community, kind of de-silo a little bit. So we're really investigating those as much as we possibly can. 
Um, we're also planning to install a self-check. We're really looking at that strongly. That's kind of like when you go to Walmart or something like that, you can check out your own groceries. Well, libraries have actually been doing this for a number of years as well, and we think that's a way. Um, it's a double value adding proposition because we think that it will not only increase efficiency so folks can do other things, free them up for other activities that add value to our folks, but also, believe it or not, um, big time readers, I don't know if you knew this, sometimes can be introverted, and they would not like to, they would like to just kind of check out and go along the way. So we think it'll not only add value to it in terms of efficiency, but also some folks would prefer to take that option as well. Not myself, as you can tell. Um, the seed library, we actually are looking to establish a seed library for the city of Springfield, um, for the, the community here. Folks, we're actually working with um, Grove Springfield um, to be able to provide seeds. We'll check them out. We're not asking for them back. Um, actually, we will later on. You'll see what I'm talking about here. Uh, we'll let those have those seeds. They can learn about gardening. They can learn uh, about you know healthy eating. Make sure they have access to that. Take advantage of our great soil here. And then all we ask is when they do harvest them, they bring some back and we continue the process going forward. And so we're really excited about that um, as well. Um, I put start website redesign process here because it's a big endeavor right now. Uh, the last time I think the web library's website has been tweaked a little bit in the past four or five years, but um, the last time it's been really overhauled and renovated is mid to late thousands. Um, and it, it, it's showing. It has that feel to it, to be completely frank with you. We view the library as the fourth floor of our establishment, and I think the fourth floor should reflect, we did that great renovation, the fourth floor should reflect the, the greatness of the community just like the other three floors if it does. Um, so really that's something we really wanted to do. Uh, we want to focus on STEM, which is science, technology, engineering, and math. Those are going to be very important skills in the community going forward. We really want to have the emphasis on that. The next great programmer, coder, 3D printer, Something we haven't even thought of, guys, uh, might come from our community here because they might uh, they they got interested in that at the library. Um, so, really, we're helping try to build that human capital. That's a big deal for us, and helping those folks that might be a little more um, disadvantaged, having the same opportunities, a little bit of an equalizer for them as well. Um, it also, I think, helps in terms of keeping. Um, our capital up, our human capital up, and having a great workplace environment, because what we do now makes an effect 20 years in the future, so if we have more folks who have those, act those skills, we're a more attractive place for businesses to move to. Um, we want to continue to promote our e-cards throughout the community. Right now, we're in all of 186 district schools, but anyone who is in that district, whether they're homeschooled, go to a parochial school, they are eligible for an e-card as well, and we'd like to give them the same opportunities as well, so we're looking to establish that a little bit more, and we're pushing towards that this, um, this part of the year as well. Um, we've done a great job, a pretty good job, I would say, with our outreach opportunities. We think we can redouble our efforts and do a little bit better with that. We only have the one location, and Springfield can be a pretty geographically large city, so sometimes it's hard to get around to get to the library. We want to remove those obstacles to use, uh, maybe do some pop-up libraries so we can get out to all different parts of the community. Um, make ourselves be known, library card sign up so they can do those e-cards. We've really tried to get as many obstacles as possible to being able to use the library, and that's one way that we're looking at. So we think there's a lot of uh, potential there for library use. And last but not least, um, we've kind of looked at the strategic plan. I didn't touch on that, but we're going to have our strategic plan when we're submitting that to the board in February. That's kind of the big picture. Um, we want to review and update some of the library policies. Those are kind of the, the trees. So we looked at the big picture. We want to kind of focus in on the trees there. And without that, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. I'll answer Alderman any questions. Alderman uh, Will, I know that Alderman Proctor and I will talk to you quite a bit about different things at the library. And one of the things that i got to say is, is that the library was in need of a serious facelift. It was in need of a public image workover. And direct, uh, the previous director had already started that. And you've done a really good job, you and your staff, of continuing that public makeover to where people are seeing more things on Facebook, Twitter, the city website, showing the things that the uh, community can do. Just as an example, I know Alderman Proctor and I talked about one of the particular things where you guys scheduled it an event where you have the, the fiddle lessons on Friday mm -hmm. nights, and that's something that's... While it's kind of quirky, there are definitely people getting interested in things that you guys are doing this way. Yep. We had fiddle and banjo, and we had 
we'd average about you know between 10 and 20 people for those. So there was some definite. We did actually a ukulele thing too with the Ukutopians. And and like I said, this is what brings people into the library. Yeah. We've had the physical makeover. Now you guys are doing the image makeover. And to that effect, um, some of the things that you talked about in here, I like the direction that you're going. You guys are doing more with less. Um, most of the questions that I had on specific line items have been have been answered. They were shared services things, the, the computers with the, the same problem that we talked about earlier with the security on it. And you answered my question about the uh, line 1806 about the fleet. How, how yeah. did it possibly drop yep. all the way down to $315? And you said it was based on that's just what you guys needed done. It's based on usage. So since last year's usage, you didn't have a lot of fleet costs, this year's budget reflects a much lower number. Correct. And we're hopeful that continues. Right. Now, the couple things that I just wanted to bring up publicly is that when you're talking about doing these resume things and the Excels, um, something that might be beneficial as we're going forward is possibly getting the area librarians from the different schools where maybe you had them come in, have just a meeting, show them what you have, and then talk about, you know, what kind of, have them do like a, a, a private submittal back through email where they give you suggestions that would help their students or would be beneficial. Um, that way there we continue to go in the direction where we're community oriented and, and doing the things that they need and getting the, the, pro, the, the things that will help them. And to that effect, um, one of the other things I, I mentioned to you before, we have the Illinois WorkNet Center over on 9th Street, and that's uh, one of the places that where the resume building and some of the skills trainings, they're putting people back to work who've been laid off or are having trouble finding jobs. If you partner with them and you're getting the things that the community needs, once again, I think it makes the library more relevant. It also get, continues that public facelift that we definitely need. Um, and one of the items I actually had in here, uh, just to respond to those, one of the items we had in here, great suggestions, thank you, um, was actually we had kind of worked with WorkNet20 to have Winway, the resume creation software, on there. So we actually are kind of partnering them. So when someone goes to WorkNet20, creates the resume with their software Winway there, they can continue to work on that in the evening hours and weekend hours when those aren't open. So we are kind of looking at that, and we think that's a great opportunity. We're looking to train, have their folks come over and train us how to use it a little bit better to get the most out of it. So um, it was definitely resonate with me. And uh, we actually are doing a little bit. I think it's great to have the librarians come in from the area. I think that's wonderful. We've been going out to them a little bit and showing how our e-resources work. But I think your comments about maybe having them come in and give us some critique and tell us so we could tell them a little bit more so they could see the library and push that to their students, I think as well, resonates with me as well. But so I think so. you need to continue the electronic things that you're doing. The, the I, I think a number of the other aldermen, we've spoken to each other about how those are definitely resonating. I'm having constituents comment on it, seeing public comments on Facebook, Twitter, et cetera. I think you guys are in the right direction. Thank you. Comment, Menon. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Will, the first line I ever look at on these reports is, does the, did the budget grow or go down? And you're down, mm -hmm. just like a couple of the other departments, you're down uh, about $10,000 on yep. a 4.6 million dollar million dollar budget so nice going i know your personnel costs are going up so you cut elsewhere so nice going thank you uh, alderman proctor then essential yeah i just want to say thank you for everything you're doing especially in the situation you're in you've i you know i've shared many beers and stuff and talked about this yeah. in the library and your, your vision your plan and i think you're the right guy for the job for this and so i appreciate everything you're doing and my eight-year-old actually does the banjo stuff on Friday, yeah. so he really enjoys it. And you cost me 120 bucks <laughs> to go buy him a banjo. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm but, sorry about that. No, I'm it's sorry. all good. It's all good. It's all good for educational stuff. But no, I appreciate what you're doing, and uh, and you just cease, you never cease to amaze me. It seems like you have a new idea every month. So I just okay. thank you much. Great, and you know I'll pass that along to my staff because really they they do a really great job, and I'll pass that all on to them because um, we have a number of folks there, really innovative, really doing a lot of different things, and we're really proud of what we've done. So. It, it's, um, while I get some of the credit for it, I think they, they do the lion's share of it, and I'm going to give the kudos to them, so thank Good. you for that. Oh, thank you. Alderman DeCenzo. Uh, Director, you have been fantastic to work with, and thank I you. appreciate the time that you've given me in answering my questions. And, you know, just taking it a step further, and we've discussed this, I would really like to see some summer programming for kids. Like I told you, I pay upwards of $200 a week 
um, to send my kid to some to different summer camps. Um, if you provide camp for 50 kids, that's you're raising $120,000 in a summer. Um, if you do it over Christmas break or you know the holiday break uh, or days off, there are all these days off that um, normal working parents don't have off. I don't have Casimir Pulaski day off. Um, <laughs> I would love to. Sounds great, yeah. but if you you know one day programs, people would pay for them. So just something to keep, you know, keep in mind going forward. I don't have I don't have tomorrow off either. <laughs> Me either. <laughs> um, have... Director, um, I, I love your enthusiasm. Like uh, Autumn, echoing what Autumn Desenzo says, I think you're the right person for the job. You are out in the community. You've come to a couple of, of the events that I've asked you to come to, and uh, hopefully we can get you out more so more people can find out what the library is about and what services the library has to offer and what free services they have to offer. So, again, appreciate your enthusiasm and, and anything that they can do for you, let us know. Oh, great. Thank you. An <laughs> open invitation if anyone wants me to come talk about library resources anywhere, I could go on all day. So I'd love to come talk. So for, do come grab me. Very good. And with that, anybody else, any questions or concerns? Thank you very much. I'm going to get my coverage to the situation with Levi.